Well, hello, friend. I'm so excited to have you back here for another episode of the Product Biz Podcast. Thank you for all of the love on last week's episode. So many great DMs. So many people actually trying this challenge, noticing some things. I mean, that is huge. So thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. If I haven't expressed my gratitude for you, just know that I am so appreciative for every single person that listens to this podcast. Because the truth is, it's not your normal podcast. Most podcasts, which I fell into the trap of doing, are all about the how-to and the things you got to do and this tactic and that tactic and this new thing and that new thing, which is great. However... If you as an individual aren't growing in these ways that we talk about on this podcast, you can have all the strategy and tactics and to-dos and how-tos in the world, and you're probably not going to do it. You're probably not going to show up. You're probably going to give up after one try if it doesn't go your way. Or you probably won't even believe that it's going to make an impact. Or you jump from project to project to project to project, never sticking with one, which is kind of what we're going to talk about today. So these underlying things that we talk about here, that you and I talk about here, are what make or break a business. And I wish more people knew that. I wish more people knew that shiny object syndrome and jumping from this tactic to that tactic isn't what leads to successful businesses. What leads to a successful business is a business owner that is able and capable to build a business in a particular way that leads to success. So it all starts with you, the business owner, 100% day in and day out. I've said this time and time again that running a business is world's biggest, most expansive, most challenging personal development journey because you are going to be tested and tried and come up with all of your fears and have to overcome them in order to really thrive as a business owner. Now for me, a personal growth junkie, I love that. Sign me up. Give me all the challenges and tests and tribulations and let me become the best version of me. I truly think that is what we are put on this earth for, to grow and evolve as individuals to try new things, to overcome fears, to see what we're capable of. And my biggest fear is like being 90 years old on that journey to the afterlife, being like, damn, I wish I would have played a bigger game. I wish I would have tried harder. I wish I would have took more risks. I wish I would have spoke up. I wish I would have just promoted my business relentlessly. I don't want that to happen, which is why I speak up or I'm learning to speak up, which is why I promote my business relentlessly, which is why I promote Product Biz Academy relentlessly, because I know that I can impact more people the more I talk about it and share about it, the more I share these less known tactics with you on the podcast, the more I can impact you and everyone else listening. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being here and for doing the work that most people won't do because that's what leads to true lasting growth. Which brings us to today's topic of conversation, which is a good question. What are we talking about today? I had a topic when I pressed record and now let me retrieve it (laughs) because I know it's a good topic. Okay, we are going to talk about... Okay, you guys thought I was joking, but really, I did forget it. I had to hit the pause button, and now I remembered. This is such a good topic. We are going to talk about what is underneath the hood of constantly coming out with new products. If you are someone who loves to launch new products, and I mean, maybe you sell candles, so you love to come out with a different scent Not every season, not every quarter, but every month, multiple cents per month. Maybe you have a launch that you drum up for two weeks. And as soon as that's over, you go right to your next launch of your next new product. Or maybe you do skincare and you have your 
maybe your core products, but you want to add more, another product. Oh, let me try a deodorant. Let me try a face cream. Let me try this. Let me try that. Or any other business. Maybe you sell jewelry and you're like, oh, I need to have this style and this combination. And let me try this. And you're constantly coming out with new products. We're going to talk about that and dive underneath the hood of what's actually happening. This is like the psychology of business. That's what I really like to talk about, the psychology of business, the psychology of marketing, the psychology of why we do or don't show up, the psychology of new products. Sounds fun. Trust me, it's going to be fun. At least I think it's fun. I love this stuff. And I think it goes back to being a personal development junkie because Personal development is all like psychology, basically. Understanding who you are underneath the surface. So this is where I really geek out. Now, a lot of people crutch on constantly coming out with new products, meaning that they don't know how to grow their business otherwise. The only way they know how to drum up excitement or new sales or DMs or engagement or likes or comments or anything is by coming out with a new product. Now, what I'm going to tell you here may actually blow your mind a little bit. Coming out with new products is actually a form of self-sabotage. And it comes from the belief of or the need to not bother people. Now, hear me out. When you launch a new product, there's a reason to talk about your business. There's a reason to talk about your products. It's new. It's exciting. It's never been done before. You have this incredible product, this new label, this new scent, this new option, this new style, this new combination, and you have a reason to talk about it. You have a new reason to be on Instagram, to talk about it on your stories, to post about it, to send an email, to rave about it because it's something new. It's something different. You've never done it before, right? You have permission to talk about it because of this. What you don't see on the other side of that coin is thinking that if you're talking about the same old product, that you've always had, again, then you are bothering people. And that's what I mean by saying that new products are a form of self-sabotage. Not only because of the 3D tactical things that are required when you launch a new product, for example, the capital and funds to buy new ingredients, the time to experiment, the time to create a new label, the time to create a new package, the time to take photos and edit photos and add these listings to your website, to Etsy, to FAIR. Not to mention that time is money. So the amount of money that is being spent of your time focused on this new product just to do it over and over and over again. So it is self-sabotage from the 3D tactical time and money perspective because you're spending a lot of time and a lot of money and you're not actually growing the business. But what's more concerning to me is the self-sabotage of I don't want to bother people, so I'm constantly going to come out with something new because if it's new and exciting and something I haven't done before, I have permission to talk about it. But if it's something I've done before and I've talked about before and people have seen before, well, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to be repetitive. I don't want to bother people. Because if I'm talking about something over and over and over and I've had this product for like a year, oh my gosh, people are going to see me talking about it and see me talking about it again. And they're going to say, oh my God, here's this chick talking about this product for the 15th time. Get on with it, Monica. We know you've got this product. And then they're going to unfollow me or they're going to say something to me of like, you keep saying the same things and talking about the same things. Maybe they're going to say I'm boring. Maybe they're going to just never buy from me again. And maybe I should just come out with something new so I don't have to experience any of those emotions or face 
any of those emotions. Can you see how that is self-sabotage? You are preventing yourself the opportunity to overcome those emotions. And you're also self-sabotaging in the 3D with time and money. This is why when people join Product Biz Academy, I'm such a stickler on if you cannot come out with products for like six months, that'd be great. <laughs> and I know that sounds funny when I say it that way, but seriously, because here's what happens. And I see this time and time again. I'm going to give you the example of Erin from No Poo Products. When Erin joined Product Biz Academy, she had her dry shampoo lip balms, body butter. She was doing bath bombs and she had multiple different variations and scents of all of those. Multiple lip balms, multiple body butters, multiple dry shampoos, multiple bath bombs that she probably had, I don't know, four times five, probably 20 different SKUs, if not more. And this is something that I tell my product Biz academy members. It's like when you're in PBA for the first six months, don't come out with any new products. And primarily it's because of the 3D time and money aspect of, hey, instead of spending all this time researching, taking photos, updating listings, etc., you guys heard me list off all the things. Let's spend that time on marketing and selling, on creating a kick-ass Etsy shop, a kick-ass fair shop, of connecting on Instagram, of having a kick-ass website, of creating consistent sales that aren't reliant on a new product or hype. And that's truly understanding the skill of marketing and selling. So that's one reason why I mention that to my members, but I also mention it because I need them to get away from this people pleaser thought that comes up of, but I'm bothering people if I'm talking about the same product over and over. Because when you have a coach that's guiding you not to come up with new products, you got to face that dragon and slay that dragon. And oh my gosh, when you come out on the other side of that, you're going to be a completely different person. So let me bring this back to Erin. This was something we have to talk about in Product Based Academy. And with all of my members, when I first mentioned this, it's like jaws drop, eyeballs get really big and kind of pop out of their sockets. They start to question, why did I sign up for this program? <laughs> I'm just kidding. No one has ever said that to me, but by their facial expressions, they're like, what the hell? I love to create and I love to come up with new products and you're taking that away from me. However, they get behind it because if nothing changes and nothing changes, if you keep doing what you've always done, you're going to get the same results. And these people who join Product Based Academy know that I need guidance. I need support. I've seen what you've done. I've seen what you've, your members have done. And I want that strategy. So tell me what that strategy is. Let me absorb it and let me run with it. Those are the incredible members that I attract. So with Erin, the beautiful thing that happened is I found out that she hated creating her bath bombs. Those were the words that she has said to me. I hate making these bath bombs. <laughs> and I can't tell you that how many times I hear that from my members, that they strongly dislike making a certain product yet they keep it and they keep coming out with variations of it and new scents and all these things. And with Aaron, it was deciding, okay, if you don't like these bath bombs, why are you selling them? And she ended up, after we built some of that confidence up, removing them from her website. And she hasn't had them on her website probably for like a year since we've had that conversation. We've also had the conversation of not coming out with new scents and limiting it to like one Christmas scent that she comes out with during the holidays. Otherwise, keep your products business as usual, the ones that you got. And it's so amazing because with these conversations with Erin, seeing her lean into learning how to sell her existing products and coming on the other side of not worrying about bothering people or talking about them too much or sharing about them too often and just fully authentically sharing about them because these are products that she loves, that her customers love, that she can talk about for days because she's gotten over that fear of, oh my gosh, I need a new product. I need something exciting because otherwise I'm bothering people. Now, what's really fun with this example from Erin is once we, I want to say like healed that, 
which, and this is like, Erin's going to listen to this and she's going to be like, wow, I didn't know that was how deep this, this exercise was that we did because this is how I approach Product Biz Academy. Sometimes I won't tell people what we're doing underneath the surface with the beliefs and the healing and the fear of judgment and overcoming these softer skills because I speak to my members in like the 3D aspect of like, listen, your time and money and energy is going here. But in reality, we're actually healing a lot of stuff underneath the surface. However, most people, I would say all people, resonate more with the consequences and benefits in the 3D tactical side of how I explain it. But in reality, like we're healing some shit. We're healing this fear of being judged. We're he- healing this fear of um, being a people pleaser and everything that comes with it. So what's awesome with Erin is since we've worked on this, she's removed a couple more skews. She goes, you know what? I don't like my dark dry shampoo. It has charcoal. It's kind of messy. Gets all over the house when I have my employee making it. And sometimes when I ship it, 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 the pot, the powder is so fine. It comes out of the tube and she ended up discontinuing it. And then a couple weeks ago, she goes, you know what? I don't really like making my body butter, especially in the summer. Sometimes it melts and she stopped selling it. And now she's totally leaning in to her dry shampoo, the light and medium, her dry shampoo brush, her scalp massager, her lip balm, and her mermaid texturizing spray. How many skews is that? It's like five skews. And she has maybe a couple cents. So we'll say 10 skews from what she previously had, which was 20, maybe even 25. And now she just shows up and talks about those products so confidently. And it's just so amazing to see. And now she's in a place where she's like, okay, I'm going to bring back my lotion in the fall, train an employee on how to do it. It's great for winter, dry skin, maybe bring the bath bombs in, have an employee do it. It's great for stocking stuffers. But you can see how... In this case, we really had to pare down and just overcome some of these beliefs that are hidden underneath the surface. And once you do that, you can kind of pare back up if you want to. This is why I tell my members, like, for six months, don't come out with new products. doesn't mean you're never going to come out with new products, but let's get your time, your money, and your energy in a really good spot that then when you come out with new products, it's not sucking your time, money, or energy. Because until you work on those foundations, the new products are totally going to sway your business in a not good way. How I want you to think of this is think of a plant or a flower that has really, really, really weak roots. We have this snake plant. I don't know why snake plants used to be really easy for me, but all of a sudden snake plants, the one in our bathroom, it can't survive. It just doesn't survive. It's to the point that the snake plant has just these really small roots. And then the actual leaves fall over. Now, how I want your business to be is have really strong foundational roots that go deep into the earth, that are stable, that are structurally sound, that the plant, the tree, the the flowers, the leaves that bloom from that, that grow from that can grow tall and strong. And no matter what type of weather comes by, that plant, that tree, that flower is going to thrive because its roots are so strong. And unless your roots are strong, you're going to get swayed around in the wind. If a storm passes by, that flower is going to break off. It's going to go limp. It's not going to grow tall or strong. So I want to bring this back to how coming out with new products prevents us from talking about our existing products in a way that is self-sabotage because we don't want to bother people by talking about the same thing over and over and over and over again. Well, I want to reassure you a couple things. Number one, if you feel like you're bothering people, listen to last week's episode about asking random strangers for the time. Because that is going to build your confidence that you're actually not bothering people. And I highly recommend for you do that. It's going to shift things so much for you. Number two, if you are bothering people, what's the consequence of that? 
truly journal on this of like, if I am bothering someone, what does that mean? Because a lot of times we have this really scary thought in our head, like, oh my gosh, I'm bothering people. Don't want to bother people. Really don't want to bother people. And I really don't want to bother people. But when you actually sit down and journal and be like, if I did bother someone, what would that mean? You may come up with instances like, all right, maybe someone's going to scroll past my feed. Maybe someone is going to scroll to the next story. Maybe, maybe someone's going to unfollow me. And then ask yourself, will you survive that? If one person unfollows you, are you going to survive? Yes. If one person scrolls past your feed, are you going to survive? Yeah. If one person scrolls through your story, are you going to survive? Absolutely. If you truly are bothering people, what is the absolute worst case scenario? Okay, an, an unfollow. Not a big deal. Now on the flip side, if you talk about your existing products to the point that your customers actually know what your business is, what you're known for, for the products, they know the main benefits, the value, the transformation. They've seen customer reviews and testimonials. They see you shipping it out. They know what it's made with, how it's made. They know everything about this one product that they now want to buy it. What's the best case scenario? Well, shit, maybe you'll have some more customers. So is that potential unfollow with the potential of more customers worth it to you to talk about your existing products more often? Because here's the truth. We live in such a fast Twitch world. What do I mean by that? Scroll, 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 notification, 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 swipe left, swipe right, swipe up, swipe down, whatever's going on these days. That people need to see something. The new statistic is between 40 and 60 times before they know enough about it to purchase. So shit, you better get used to quote unquote bothering people because you got to talk about your products 40 to 60 times. That's one individual product 40 to 60 times for someone to have it in their head, what your product is, who it's for, what it's about, how it can help them so that they purchase. So part of it is ripping the bandaid of like, listen, you're not bothering anyone because no one's actually keeping count. No one's actually over here writing down, oh my gosh, how many times did Monica talk about Product Biz Academy in the last week? I can't stand this lady. All these incredible testimonials, how dare she share how people's lives are being changed by this program. Okay, cool. If someone's thinking that, please like unfollow. Thank you. I'm sorry I couldn't show you enough to shift your perspective on how your business can change your life, right? Like that's what I'm trying to do. And if you don't want to see that, that's totally cool. The moral of the story is most people aren't thinking that. Like, yeah, I do get unfollows. Cool. I'm fine with that. But most people aren't here judging me. Most people aren't here sending me nasty emails or messages. And the ones who do, I know it says more about them than it does about me. But when you know that people need to see something between 40 to 60 times to purchase, that's going to allow you to really get nitty gritty on what you talk about when you share about your products. It's going to help you become an expert marketer. When you have to find 40 to 60 ways to talk about this one product, dang, do you know how good you get at marketing? How many different angles and stories and use case situations and how many different pieces of information you share about that one product? That's like a master marketer in the making. And then your business is going to grow. So if there's anything that you leave this episode with, it's understanding and asking yourself why you do the things that you do to see if there's an underlying belief or judgment or fear underneath the surface. Why am I coming out with new products? Oh, well, I feel bad talking about my existing ones. I feel like I'm bothering people. Well, are you actually bothering people? 
Or are you actually helping them make that purchase decision? Are you actually bothering people? Or are you learning marketing and selling? Are you actually bothering people? Or are you speaking to the people who value you and your products and not worrying about the rest or the other people? Are you actually bothering people? Or are you learning how to grow your business? And second thing I want to leave you with is also to, again, listen to last week's episode because it's going to totally correlate. And if you do feel like I'm bothering people, I don't want to bother people, here's another really fun thing that you can do, which I forgot to mention on last week's episode, which you may need to listen to for context here. But if you feel that way, what I want you to do is to take a selfie out in public where there's like a big mirror and there's a lot of people around you. Let me explain to you why I mentioned this. As I'm doing these exercises for myself of getting comfortable being uncomfortable, one thing that is really uncomfortable for me is all eyes on me. For example, I have my own coach who I absolutely, I don't know what the right word is, who I love. He's a fantastic coach. And there w- there's a pretty big group in this coaching program. And there was this one time where he called on me to speak in front of like 200 people, which I wasn't prepared for or I wasn't expecting. And I am such a person of like, I don't want all eyes on me. So I'll answer your questions really quickly just so I can get this over with. So like you can go back on with your normal programming and I'm out of the spotlight. Now, if I'm signing up to like be a speaker or to give a talk, I can prep myself for like all eyes on me and I signed up for this but if it's unexpected it just throws me off of my game and I recognize that in myself as a weakness so I'm challenging myself to do things that are more uncomfortable where eyes are on me to realize number one it's not a big deal and number two I survived so one thing that I've been doing is after my gym class which is a class of 45 people at Berries. If you've been to Berries and if you love Berries, send me a DM so we can talk about how awesome Berries is because I love Berries boot camp. And after the class, when everyone is leaving the room, I've been taking a selfie in the mirror right in front of everyone. And I did this last week for the first time. And to me, this is uncomfortable. I'm like, oh, I don't want them to think I'm like so self-centered or I'm like this person who takes a selfie after the gym and it's for the gram and I'm an influencer. I don't want people to think that. And it was so fun because it was nerve wracking, but I went out there and I took that selfie with all these people kind of behind me. And afterwards, I realized two things. Number one, It wasn't as humiliating as I expected. It actually wasn't a big deal at all. And number two, no one even noticed. Even in the picture that I took, there is not one person looking at me, giving me a side eye, snarling at me, or any inkling of those fears of what I thought people would think of me. And I was like, oh, that was pretty cool. Like, no one cared. (laughs) How awesome is that that I can do something where I feel like all eyes are on me and really the stakes aren't that big because no one's over here with a magnifying glass inspecting me in every single move in order to judge me for doing it right or wrong. So if you struggle with talking about your existing products because you feel like you're bothering someone or talking about your business because you feel like you're bothering someone, especially if it's on your business Instagram page where that is your job and duty to talk about your business, then I encourage you to do something like that. Go to a public space where there's a lot of people around you, take a selfie, take a mirror selfie, do something where it could be awkward because people may judge you. And then afterwards, when you realize oh, no one actually judged me, you'll bring that same energy and that same train of thought to your Instagram. Because before it would be, oh my gosh, I'm talking about my products again. People are going to judge me. I'm bothering them. Now you're going to have proof in your brain of, oh, actually, no, I'm not going to bother people. The people who care are going to watch and listen and learn and buy. And that's it. Isn't that incredible? And look at that. If you didn't have to come up with new products, you probably just saved yourself a lot of money. 
Because the number one biggest thing that I see is the people who don't have a lot of money in their business bank account are the people who are constantly coming out with new products and spending all of their capital on new ingredients, labels, packaging, and everything that goes along with it. So not only are you going to grow, your bank account is going to grow from less costs and more money because people need to see something 40 to 60 times before they buy. You're going to grow in confidence in yourself, letting go of fear of talking about your products, fear of bothering people, fear of judgment. You're also going to become a better marketer, better with your words, more creative. Wow. From this one small, minute thing of not coming out with new products. And if you really look at all the layers we talked about today, This is how ninja we get in Product Biz Academy. One thing I tell my members at the beginning of every single kickoff call is you guys have to trust me that every single thing or exercise or challenge or feedback that I give you is for a purpose and for a reason. I never just tell people to do something just to do it. Like there's a lesson underneath, there's healing underneath, there's letting go of fears underneath the surface. And that's what it's all about. So I hope you trust me on this too. And if you are interested in joining us in Product Biz Academy, I encourage you to sign up for the priority notification list at monicalittlecoaching.com slash PBA waitlist, PBA as in Product Biz Academy. Those are for the people who are ready, who need the guidance, the support to take their business to the next level, who are done doing it on their own, who are done self-sabotaging themselves, who need someone that's on the other side that can help them to see how to get through what you're working through right now instead of just being stuck in quicksand by yourself. So that link is monicalittlecoaching.com slash PBA waitlist. Thank you for hanging out with me. Let me know what you thought of this podcast episode and I will see you next week.